Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Esports Report. I am your lovely host, Ashley Hodge, and I'm happy to talk to you about how the upcoming season is starting next week for the 2022 Play vs. GHSA High School Esports League. I am super excited to get started. Uh, I know that my students are too, so that's why I wanted to bring you this episode today. I want to talk about the updates and changes that have happened to the rules so that you are aware of any of the changes. So let's go ahead and just hop into that. I'm going to make myself smaller here. I'm using OBS. I started my own gaming channel, uh, so I've been fiddling around with OBS. Okay, so I will post this specific link in the... Uh, episode description so you can get to it really easily but essentially these are the rule changes that have happened and since the season's about to start I thought it would be very important for us to go through them uh, me to offer my uh, opinions or advice on them or just to make you like aware of what's going on all right so the first thing we need to talk about is that it's the main uh, competition book the rule book for high schools. Um, so update 3.2 is coach and this is an added section stating that coaches are required to be virtually present and available during match in the match lobby chat. Now um, specifically for Georgia coaches have to be physically present that's a GHSA rule and the GHSA rule in the bylaws overrides the play versus rule. In some of the other states, they do allow coaches to be virtual, but this update is just saying that, hey, you know, if you're a coach and you're at home during match time, you have to be in communication with your students, you have to be available to them, and you have to be present for the entire time during the match. Now, again, I have to stress this does not apply to Georgia. In Georgia, you physically have to be in the room with the students, okay? So, I just want to make that clear. Uh, the next update is the added 5221 playoff uh, eligibility. Uh, this is new. Uh, teams may not miss or forfeit more than two regular season matches in order to be eligible for playoffs. So since 2022, not 2022, since 2021, um, when the COVID pandemic started, a lot of schools closed, uh, mine included. We had to go virtual. And if you're like me, you live in a very, like, rural area that the children don't have internet at home. Uh, the county put hotspots um, all over the, the city, but you don't want to, like, have to drive to a hotspot and try to play, like, a competitive esports game on it. So, it was a big kerfuffle, okay? Um, so, one of the main issues was that GHSA did not allow students to play from home. That is, again, in the bylaws, and the bylaws will override any of the play versus rules. So since students had to physically be present at school, when the schools sh shut down, they couldn't. <laughs> so you had teams that, you know, had to forfeit left and right be because of these issues. And so a lot of coaches were complaining about it, understandably, because, you know, your kids are paying to play, so you want them to get the experience. Um, but there were a lot of circumstances outside of people's control. Now, uh, 2021, we still saw like a massive amount of forfeits, and that was because of COVID again and the quarantine rules. Uh, basically, at my school in 2021, if you had COVID, um, you had to stay out for like 10 days. And so, if you had a team where you just had the minimum number of players and no sub, and one of them, you know, got sick with COVID and they can't play from home, that team either had to play shorthanded or they had to play in, or, well, sh play shorthanded or just forfeit. So, that happened. And so, going into 2022, uh, play versus and GHSA does not want to see a lot of forfeits because that really sours the season for a lot of people. Uh, but again, and this is just my personal opinion, um, students in extreme circumstances like that should be able to play from home, I think. 
Um, but I, I, I can understand why they don't allow it because one, if the student's playing from home, uh, they would probably say there's no real way to like verify that it's actually them. I would argue that you could make webcams a requirement like they do in professional esports, and that would solve that problem. Um, I just, I don't know. I think with COVID and how it's still happening right now in 2022, uh, there needs to be an exception that if a team only has like, say, three players for Rocket League with no sub, if one of the students gets quarantined and sent home, they should be able to play virtually um, with with the requirement of a webcam, I think. Uh, so that's that's the only issue I have with that. Uh, but yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> got off all my tangent. So this season, if teams forfeit or miss two matches, it doesn't matter what your ranking is in playoffs, you will not be able to make playoffs. So just be be aware of that. Uh, update 52.32 playoffs, added section what, with what happens if two teams from the same school enter playoffs and both make the semifinals. Uh, play versus I think tries hard to make sure that this doesn't happen, but it still happens anyway. Um, as of right now, you can only have two esports teams for that particular esport per school. So what that means is I can only have two Rocket League teams, I can have two Hearthstone teams, two Super Smash teams, two two whatever teams, and that kind of prevents bigger schools from flooding the playoff brackets because I know in the beginning when I worked at Colquitt I had like 10 League of Legends teams and you know I just had a better chance of my students making playoffs in smaller schools so play versus has since corrected that and has only allowed two esports teams for that esport to participate um so there is a rule if okay so what happens if these two teams don't play each other in playoffs and they get to the semifinals. How is that fair to the other schools? So there's a new rule about that. Um, the 5.2.3 playoffs, an added section stating that single player titles such as Madden and NBA 2K will have a max of four eligible, uh, <laughs> eligible teams that can make playoffs instead of just two. Okay, so I didn't know that because that literally contradicts what I just said, but it's only for Madden and NBA 2K. So that's actually good because I had a lot of students sign up for Madden this year and, you know, they have to pay to play and only two of them can make it. So I thought, well, there's no point in accepting like all 24 kids that signed up because there's no sense in them paying to to play and then only two making it so I, I restricted my teams to only two so that's actually very good that they're opening up it up to four so that means I can have four Madden players this season and four NBA 2k players I did not know that so it's a good thing I'm making this video for you and for me all right update uh 5.3 season tiebreakers now includes a uh, play vs score and aligns with the current tiebreaker information uh, match day game protocol 6.1. Coaches are expected to have their teams ready to play on match day despite the opponents still showing TBA. Failure to do, sh to do so within a grace period will result in forfeit. Um, so, yeah, I would prefer that the thing not show TBA on game day. I would hope that I would know who I was playing on game day but I can understand how maybe a team had to reschedule and they're still waiting on those match results I mean that happens but even if your team opponent is not showing you should still be ready to play it's basically what that's saying uh, match reschedules details on the exemptions made due to reschedule to ensure that they have been accepted by both coaches um yeah so last year I really don't try to reschedule uh, a whole lot uh, because it's an inconvenience to me, my students, and then the opponent team. Um, usually, if a kid doesn't show up and their team needs them, I just kind of make them play because, again, it's not fair to the other team. And the students know going in that it's a team-based sport and they should be here to support their team. I mean, that you might think that that's unfair, but I just try to be more... Um, just more respectful to the other team and their time. So, 
yeah, rescheduling is kind of a, a pain, uh, especially for me. I don't know if other coaches have this problem, but a lot of my kids work. So when they sign up for esports, they tell their, their place of work that, hey, I can only, I need to be off on Wednesday or Thursday of whatever week. And so those are the only days that my students who work will have off. Well, what happens, you know, if a team from week one needs to reschedule? Well, the only time those students are going to be available is on Wednesday. And the next Wednesday, they have another match. So do I make them play two back-to-back -back matches on the same day? That seems ridiculous. Okay, and it's time-consuming depending on, you know, what, what eSport it is. So that's kind of where I fall in. I don't know if other coaches fall in, but I really desperately try not to reschedule. And I know that some coaches who have interacted with me in the past have probably thought that I'm not reasonable and unflexible. But it's literally because my students work and that's the only day of the week that they're available. Uh, player commitment uh, clarifies that players are be are supposed to be available for the full length of the match estimated of up to two hours. Uh, so that's really probably League of Legends. League of Legends matches can um, be be very long, so you should be available for at least two hours for the, all of those matches to be completed. None of the other esports take that long. Uh, there's an additional grace period, 6.13, clarifies details on grace period for teams who show up late and when to take action. Uh, update 6.2 is the pre-match setup, includes information on expectations that team will be ready to play on match game day, despite their opponents showing up as TBD. That's a little redundant because we've already gone over that. Uh, game specific pausing rules, that's 7.2. 3-3 points to title rulebook for specific information. Uh, basically, if a pause happens, there needs to be a really good reason for it, and I guess they have updated that section in the rulebook, which, you know, you can go and look at. Uh, we can break that down. That'll probably be a very long episode, but we could do it. Another episode for another day. Uh, so, break duration clarifies the lengths of break and when to reach out to league officials. Um, so again, that's probably more for League of Legends. Those games can be very long and students need breaks to like go to the bathroom, get some to drink, get some water, you know, answer text messages if they have text messages that are important that they need to attend to, things like that. Um, so let's see, 8.1 timeline of reschedules. All reschedules must be made within the time frame shown on the PlayVS platform. Except, uh, exceptions may be made by league officials. Um, so that was another problem that happened a lot last year. You would get a reschedule request and they would want to like reschedule it three weeks past the game day. And that's a little far out. Sometimes it wasn't that bad. I've only gotten maybe like one or two ridiculous requests like that. So basically, you know, they're just saying you have to do your reschedule within this specific time frame. If that doesn't seem to work out, then the play versus league officials will step in and I guess determine what needs to be done. Um, playoff reschedules. You used to not be able to request playoff reschedules like you just had to be there. And once playoffs hit, they, they are every day of that week. So that's kind of a problem, uh, maybe specifically just with my students who work. But if they make playoffs, I generally tell them, hey, the week of playoffs, you're, you're going to be playing every day. So you need to, you know, go ahead and talk to your boss about that. So sometimes I have trouble with that, which is, you know, a problem if a team has made playoffs. But generally, we've never had to, like, forfeit a playoff match because of that. So that's good. Um, established community... Oops, sorry. Teams may request a 24-hour reschedule in regards to playoffs. Um, established communication. Uh, basically, it's details on requirements of coaches to communicate in the match lobby chat during matches. So Play Versus has this chat feature. I... And I'm... What I'm about to admit, a lot of coaches probably hate, but I let my students use it to communicate with the other students to, to to set up some of the matches. And I'm in the chat lobby, like I'm watching them, I'm seeing what's being typed. But especially for like Super Mario, not Super Mario, uh, Smash Brothers, 
Um, that can be like a real pain to try to set up sometimes with, you know, make sure you do the friend request, make sure they friend request you back. Here's the information for the match. So it's just easier for me to let them like type that out to each other. And I know some coaches do not like that there are students in the coaching chat, but I'm always there watching them. So that's just saying that, hey, the two coaches should be communicating with each other in the chat too. Um, there's an added note on what to do if an opponent does not respond. Generally, um, and this is just me, I try to email all of the coaches at the beginning of the week that I know that I have matches against just to say, hey, looking forward to, you know, the match between your team name versus my team name on this date at this time. And usually for the subject line, I'll put the eSport and then I'll put the two team names so I know what game and what match they're talking about, and what specific team, because if you're like me, you've got multiple teams and multiple esports, and it's just hard to keep up with. So, that that's what I recommend you do. Uh, and there's a break week designation, which is a default week, um, where you don't have any matches. Which, I like that, but I also think it's weird. And, and this is why I think it's weird, um, so the regular season ends right before Thanksgiving break, which I think is smart because, well, I guess it could be the week, the week after Thanksgiving break, because all the schools had the same Thanksgiving break. I'm thinking of one year during spring break, all the schools had different spring breaks and rescheduling with different schools with 10 different league of legends teams was a nightmare so i'm hold on that, that's what i'm thinking of so yeah everybody has thanksgiving um as a break so that would serve as a break and then your final week of regular season could be after thanksgiving break but as a teacher like i try to finish things right before break because i know nobody's going to remember it when they come back for a break so maybe that's why they're doing it so I don't know. I would, I don't know how I feel about the break week. Um, because I, I think I would rather give up that week so my students can play an extra game. But, you know, maybe schools just, you know, they want a week where they want off. And I understand that because esports is full time. <laughs> uh, you know, once it starts, it is not over until the end of school. I, it's the only, uh, full, full year sport that I know of. And I know there are a lot of coaches out there putting in a lot of hard work to make their programs awesome. So I want you to know that we appreciate you. Uh, um, yeah, so I guess all my tension, I guess a break week is fine. Um, I don't know. I'm just used to like go, 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 go once esports start and it never stops unless a major holiday happens. So I take back what I said. I guess break week is fine. It'll be nice to, um, just take a breather, especially if you're if you're doing multiple esports. So I, I take back what I said. I take back what I say about that. I'm I'm the goober. Um, okay, so there are some ch rule changes for Super Smash Ultimate. Um, that is the fighting game on the Nintendo Switch. Update 1.4 game format. Uh, basically, it's an added section stating that player lineups can be changed up to 15 minutes before the beginning of a match in case the coaches need to swap the bench players or change the order in which their players play during a match. Yeah, sometimes my kids are not the best at showing up on time, and I panic if they're not in the computer lab, my, my room by 340, I panic. And so I'll end up swapping in a substitute player who is already listed as a sub on the bench, and sometimes the other coach gets mad when that happens. So that's just saying that, up to 15 minutes before the match, you can change the position of players as they appear in your lineup, or you can change them from uh, a sub player who's on the bench. Uh, so let's see, tiebreakers um, in standing found in the main high school competition rule book and our tiebreaker article. So that's for the regular season. You can go and look at that. Uh, added 2.3 wired internet connection details required the use of a wired connection for all matches. Meaning that, listen, wireless internet is terrible at school sometimes. That's just the way it is. And it's not always reliable. That hard connection with the wired connection is much better. 
uh, added 2.4 uh, use of internet hotspots, detailed issue caused by the use of internet hotspots and what may occur if a connection is found to be unstable due to this. Um, so basically, your students should not be playing on hotspots that you're not reliable. And honestly, what I think has happened is students will do that. Their connection is unstable. And then they want to complain that they lost a match and they submit a, a claim to play versus. Um, play versus is probably going to tell you, tough, you shouldn't have been playing on that. So I, I would not play on that. Uh, updated 3.1 order of play. Added section stating coaches may change player order up to 15 minutes before the start of a match. Okay. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. There's an added section 1.43 regular season tiebreakers. References. Uh, tiebreakers in standing to be found in the high school co uh, competition rule book and our tiebreaker article. Added 3.44 booster control pass DLC. Details recommend of DLC, but not requirement for official competition. Um, if they're recommending you buy the DLC for a game, uh, you might want to buy it because I feel like people who have the DLC versus people who don't may have an advantage. Uh, you'll just have to look and see what's included in that specific DLC and how that affects game. Um, updated 3.5 post game posting results. The winning team is now the team which will post update the results. It used to be the home team. The the blue team, the home team would have to update the results, but now it's the winning team. So winning team, you will be responsible. So make sure you keep up with those. Uh, Splatoon, there is nothing for Splatoon. It says the section will be updated in all changes by 9-12. Uh, at the time of this recording, it is 9-24. So that is not posted. Um, I don't know how different Splatoon 3 will be in terms of Splatoon 2. I really didn't play that much of Splatoon 2. Maybe there's a huge game difference and it requires like a significant amount of changes. I don't know. I would think that maybe core multiplayer would probably stay the same. Uh, but again, I'm not sure because I'm not a Splatoon 2 expert. Uh, League of Legends, uh, stoppage of play. Now includes details, better, uh, different stoppages of play situations, and rules. So yeah, in League of Legends, you can actually like pause the game. And if you pause the game, you better have a really good reason for pausing the game. So they have updated different situations that allow you to pause the game. Um, so update section 132, player pause. Now includes mention of coaches using the play versus Matt chat to respond to a pause or report. So basically, if a team pauses and they don't give you a reason, you can try to like connect to the coach in the player chat and say, hey, what's going on? If they don't respond, then it says you can report it. Uh, added 133 duration of pause now includes a pause time limit and contacting play versus. So basically, uh, you cannot pause indefinitely anymore. It's only for a certain limit. And that you have to contact play versus. Um, okay, added section 1.35. Other unacceptable pause reasons, but not limited to the following. Added to clarify other unacceptable pause, pause reasons, but not limited to. Uh, the preseason format changed. Uh, it changed from the set of two to best of three. Uh, the regular season format changed. So instead of set of two, it's going to be best of three. Uh, and the added section for the regular season tiebreakers, and then the regular season side selections. Uh, Rocket League only has one update, added section 325, regular season tiebreakers. Uh, Hearthstone has two, links and references to the rulebook as the game of record, and how they do their season tiebreakers are also listed. Um, NBA 2K has, uh, 2023 does not have anything yet. Madden is the last game that we're looking at, and it does have a couple of updates. It says updated reference from NFL Madden 2022 to 2023, so they will be playing 2023. Uh, stoppage of play, it details different stoppages of play situations and rules. Uh, update section 142, player pause. Now includes mentions of coaches using the chat to respond to a pause. Um, the next update duration of pause includes a pause time limit in contacting play versus. 
um, any unacceptable pause reasons. So it's going to list reasons why you can't pause. There is now new updates about how you break tiebreakers. Uh, the finals have been changed. Uh, for finals, it is no longer best of five. It is now changed to best of three. So that's new. I was not aware of that. I need to know. Uh, now includes more verbose use of a PlayStation 5 with a PS4 copy of a game. I did not know that that even mattered, but it's good to know. I'll have to look at that rule myself. Uh, revise steps to creating a lobby that better align with Madden's 23 changes to UI. So they're going to provide better steps to how to create a match lobby uh, because the game itself is updated. And then clarify wording of custom playbooks on what is and what is not allowed. Added example of custom playbooks that is not allowed. Okay, so a lot of updates. So again, these are listed in their main competition rule book, which they have a link to right there. I will also put that link in the description. And like I said, this is probably going to be another episode because this is very long. This is a lot. Um, so I highly encourage you that if you are competing, you need to read this and know it clearly with all of the changes that I just rattled off. I myself need to read this and know it. So I hope this has been informational for you and, you know, good luck going into the 2022 esports season. I wish everybody the best and, you know, I'll see you guys at playoffs. <laughs> I know I'm too cocky. <laughs> Uh, but I've got some really good teams this year. I'm pretty excited. The most thing I'm excited about is I have a Hearthstone team. And as you know, if you've been watching the YouTube channel, I have devoted a lot of time with my husband to making Hearthstone coaching videos because that's just really the competitive game that I'm playing right now. So I'm kind of an expert <laughs> in Hearthstone. So I'm super excited to have a team that I can coach and uh, get better. I don't know if they will make playoffs because all of them are like extremely new to Hearthstone. And just like any other esport, and when you're first starting out, it can be overwhelming. So I'm trying to like just baby step them through it by creating all of those Hearthstone coaching videos, the Hearthstone 101 videos. I'm about to like make a series of those and it's really just to help my students. Uh, but I will post it because I don't want my efforts to go to waste. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel. You know, please leave your comments uh, below. Is there any specific game you would like to ask me about? Any specific rules? You know, any specific uh, coaching strategies? I'm more than happy to answer, you, you know, as best I can. I've been doing this since 2017. I've been a play versus super coach for a while and I will do my best to help you in any way. So please leave your comments, you know, your questions below, you know, feel free to reach out to me at the, my camera went out, hold on, at the high school esports report HS at gmail.com. And you know, if you ever want to come on the pod, let me know if you want to challenge me in a Hearthstone match and make me eat my words about being an expert. <laughs> I'm more than happy to do that too. So I hope everybody has a good day. You know, stay safe. Do the right thing. Try to be a good person. I love you and I hope you have a nice day.